joined by Ambassador Michael Oren. Dr. Oren was Israel's ambassador to the United States for many years, formerly deputy minister in a previous Netanyahu government. He's in the States again, and I'm glad because the one story that is actually significant beyond the vice president's face plant last night comes from the Times of Israel. Pentagon says U.S. not providing intel help for Israeli operations against Hezbollah. Dr. Oren, good morning, and I apologize on behalf of the United States. Israel's our ally, Hezbollah is our enemy, and we should be helping you avoid Lebanese civilians. What do you make of this decision? Well, many decisions I have trouble with. Um, this is a crucial, crucial battle. The, the big issue in Israel today is whether Israel should agree to a, a 21-day ceasefire that has been uh, forged between the United States and France. Um, I'm categorically against it. Categorically so am I. It. There's, a, there's and, UN and Security Council Resolution 1701. Just enforce that. Enforce that. I said there's two conditions. Uh, Israel gives a ceasefire if if Hezbollah agrees to a complete halt to fire on the north of Israel, complete, and Hezbollah withdraws north of the Tiny River in accordance with Resolution 1701. That is the only conditions for a ceasefire. If not, we've lost the war again. And it, 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 it'll, be, it'll be an incredible loss, and Hezbollah will have won. Hezbollah will use the 21 days to regroup, regroup rearm, and more, more Israelis will die. This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for Israel, America, and the West to deal an inc- a, de- a, 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 a deeply grievous blow uh, to Iran and its access to Russia, to all the evil in the world. And, and, and if, if America flinches at this moment, flinches, and that's what it is, um, it is it'll, be, it'll be a terrible, terrible mistake. Uh, Dr. Ron, you know the old cliche, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. We... The American administration fooled Israel once, telling it not to go into Rafah. The vice president studied the maps, blah, blah, blah. It didn't happen. None of the catastrophes happened. In fact, Israel has won in Gaza. It's mopping up. Now they're trying to fool you a second time. Do you expect the Israeli government to be acquiescent here? Uh, I hope not. And I'm looking at even the opposition <clears throat> is saying, don't go for this. Don't go for this. This war with Hezbollah is... Is nightmarish, just is. Um, these, Hezbollah, yeah, I'm sure Israel has degraded a lot of Hezbollah's uh, missile power, it, its manpower. But the fact is they have between 150 and 170,000 rockets. The rocket they fired at Tel Aviv the other day packed a warhead of almost 1,200 pounds of TNT. That wouldn't take down a building, Hugh. It would take down a neighborhood. A neighborhood. And they have, you know, and they have more accurate rockets. It is a, a huge, huge military undertaking, and we're taking on this just as Hezbollah. It's going to be rockets from Iraq, rockets from Syria, rockets from Iran itself, and the Houthi rebels. This is uh, Israel's war of independence. But if we shy from it, what happens? What happens? Hezbollah goes back to being on the northern fence. Nobody in the north can go back to their homes. We've basically lost the northern part of the country. Right now there'll be a security zone that'll go down to the, to the Sea of Galilee. We'll, we'll lose a third of the country. And we lose a third of the country. I think we'll lose our, our, our we'll lose our raison d'etre. Uh, now, Iran and, is threatened to get involved. I I don't yes. think I just don't think you worry about that, do you? Uh, sure, I do worry about it. Sure, we worry about it. They they fired on, on April 14th. They fired 350 rockets at us. I should have uh, phrased that. That forward. will not deter Israel, correct? Oh, that can't. But it can't. You know, we divide wars between wars of choice and wars of no choice. This is a classic war of no choice. There's no way that Israel can preserve the northern part of the country and maintain the status quo or go back to the status quo of October 5th, October 6th, where Hezbollah was aligned directly opposite the border along the fence in flagrant violation of 1701, I should add. And, and we, we just can't do that. And no one will go back to a town that's across the street from terrorists because now we know what terrorists will do to that town. So and, let me conclude with this, Dr. Oren. Um, you mentioned the opposition, 64 seats in the coalition. How strong is the support for rejecting the demand of, his, of the United States and France for a ceasefire? I think it's, it, it has to do with the Knesset. It has to do with the people of Israel. You know, even the people protesting in the street against Netanyahu understand that this is a war of no choice. Many of those people protesting will be in the army soon. As you know, I was in the military in the summer. I know what's going on up there. And people are ready to fight. They know the price. They do because they understand it's either it's either this or there's no state, and uh, and it, 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 you know we are remarkably resilient and tough people, <laughs> and we will get through this. It will not be easy. 
But at the end, if we if we remain firm, we will have an independent and sovereign and secure state, state of Israel. That's no. what's at stake here, period. Nadav Adal told Dan Senor that in six hours, Israel had done more damage to Hezbollah than it did in the 34 days of the 2006 war. Do you agree with that assessment? Yes. And I was in that war, too. We didn't do that much damage. <laughs> I think we did much more damage now. And, oh. uh, and, and I'm deeply disturbed with people like Leon Panetta and my old professor, Michael Walzer from Princeton, said calling oh. what we did in, with the what we purportedly did with the beepers and the walking, calling them war crimes, calling them terrorism. It, we're in a situation here today where there's no there's no measure that the Jewish state can do. Sort of sitting back and running out of interceptors and dying. There's no measure we can do that's legitimate. We can't defend ourselves. We're in a world we can't defend ourselves. And well, I just I, I repeat what have, I always we have say. To say to the world, tough. You know better than I do, but I want to say for our audience. It's a 70-30 issue in the United States standing with with Israel. It might be 80-20. Go with God. Thank you, Dr. Oren, for your update. I'll be right back, America. Hour number two of the Hugh Hewitt Show straight ahead.